So just a reminder. And I would, I would encourage you all to keep this in mind when you're thinking about logarithms. Because sometimes I definitely remember when I learned logarithms the first time, I really struggled with them. Um, so, and the thing I would encourage you to keep in mind is that two to the third equals eight. This is my preferred exponential equation. You can pick whatever you want. Two to the third equals eight means the same thing as log base two of eight equals three. So this helps me remember how to get from an exponential to a logarithm and from a logarithm to an exponential. And I also like to kind of make the connection that, you know, this number raised to this power equals this number. So that helps too. Do whatever works for you, but these are just some things that work for me. So class F, here are three of the main logarithmic rules that we use when we are trying to simplify or evaluate a logarithm, and they are the following. Um, these have names, but the names are also very similar to names for derivatives, so I'll say them and I'm not gonna write them down. So we have log base V of X times Y is equal to log base b of x plus log base b of y. <clears throat> this is called the product rule for logarithms because you're taking a log of a product and writing it as the sum of the logs of the individual factors. Um, there's also a product rule for derivatives. So it's just a rule. There's also a quotient rule for logarithms. Log base b of x divided by y is equal to log base b of x minus log base b of y. And finally, there's a power rule for logarithms. Log base b of x to a power, x to the eighth power, is equal to a times log base b of x. Let me give you examples of each of these, but these are the rules. So we use these all the time. So if you have a log of a product, you can write it as log of the first thing plus log of the second thing. If you have log of a fraction, you can write it as log of the top part minus log of the bottom part. And if you have log of x to a power, you can write it, I usually think of it as that power coming down in front. Right, this power comes down in front. And that power times log of x. I'm not saying the base because the base is always the same. So these equations only work if the base here, the base here, the base here are all the same. If this base, this base, this base, all the same. It has to be the same base. We can't really, logarithms that have different bases don't really interact well with each other at all. So it's not something we ever really consider. Um, a few examples of these things. So an example of the first rule. For example, if I had log base eight of four plus log base eight of two. Sorry, not two, 16. Let me write two there. This would be equal to log base eight of four times 16 which would be equal to four times 16 is 64. And log base eight of 64 asks the question, eight raised to what power equals 64? And that's two, right? Eight to the second power is equal to 64. We can also actually calculate these things individually and see that they add up to two. It's a little bit of work, but we can do it. So this question asks eight to what power equals four, which we could rewrite as two to the third to what power equals two to the second. So two to the three times question mark equals two squared. So three times question mark equals two. So our question mark is equal to two thirds. So this here is equal to two thirds. And this here, we can think of as eight to what power equals 16. 
But then we can write them both as powers of two again. So it's two to the three x equals two to the fourth. So three x equals four. So x equals two to the third. And it is definitely true that two thirds plus four thirds equals six thirds, which equals two. So this is just an example of this rule actually working. It is actually true. Um, let me give you an example of the other two. I'll give you an easier example of the other one. So if we had, <clears throat> excuse me, log base two of 32 minus log base two of eight. One way you can calculate this, the, the kind of using the rule way, would be that this is equal to log base two of 32 divided by eight. I do want to make it really clear. It's not log of 32 divided by log base two of eight. It is log base two of 32 divided by eight. And then 32 divided by eight is four. This is log base two of four. So log base two of four is equal to two because two to the second power is equal to four. We also could have calculated this by saying, hey, log base two of 32, that's five because two to the fifth power is equal to 32. And log base two of eight is our favorite. That's three because two cubed equals eight and five minus three is definitely equal to two. So these are just examples showing that these rules on the other side are actually really in fact true and they work for real numbers. Right, we just said that log base b of x times y is equal to log base b of x plus log base b of y, for an example. And we also showed that this one's true. And we can go do one for this last one as well. In fact, this last one is really kind of based on the first one. Which I won't erase it in just a second. I'll do an easy one and then I'll do a less easy one. So if I was going to find, I don't know, say log base three of nine to the fourth power, I could definitely write this. So there's like three different ways you can tackle this problem. One way would be to say, well, just use the rule that I erased, which is that it's four times log base three of nine. So log base three of nine is two and four times two is easy. However, sorry, I had that mistake before this, but you could also think of this as log base three of nine times nine times nine times nine. And then if you have the log of a product, you can write it as the log of each factor and then add all those logarithms together. But look, that and that are exactly the same thing. How do I get four times two? Because log base three of, so I've got the four and log base three of nine is asking the question three raised to what power equals nine and three to the second power equals nine. That's where I'm getting the two from. Or you could even be more kind of crazy about it and say, well, log base three of nine to the fourth, I could recognize that nine is three squared. So I've got log base three of three squared to the fourth power. Three squared to the fourth, when you have a power to a power, what do you do with the powers? You multiply them. This is log base three of three to the eighth. You could rewrite this, but you could also just say, here's what I'm asking. Log base three of a thing is asking the question, three to what power equals this? So let me ask you guys the question, three to the what equals three to the eighth? Hmm, it has to be eight. Right, three to the eighth equals three to the eighth. There's no other way about it. 
So no matter which way you slice this problem, the answer is going to be eight. I just want to kind of show you there's, there's lots of ways to manipulate logarithms and there's lots of ways to kind of think about what's going on. Okay, let me erase the other side of the board. We'll try not to flip the board over too quickly. Hey, everyone's having an all right Thursday. Um, just a reminder, we don't have class on Monday. I'll say it tomorrow too. So our, our, overall, our overall answer here is eight for sure. Yeah. If you, whether you're, whether you use the power rule and bring it down like that, you get eight. Whether you break it up and use the product rule four times, which I guess I didn't write the answer here, right? This would be two plus two plus two plus two, which is eight. Or whether you just rewrite it in such a way that you get log base three or three to eight. Either way you're looking at this problem, it's going to be eight. And the most, probably the most normal or the easiest way to do this particular problem would be the first way. If I've got log of something to a power, it is usually the most expedient to just bring that power down in front and then evaluate. Log base three of nine is two, so four times two is eight. That's the best, easiest way to do this particular problem. All right, so let's look at the next thing, which is to evaluate the following. So evaluate, and evaluate just means find the number. Make it as simple as you reasonably can. Sometimes it's easier than others. So evaluate one half log base six of 81 plus two times log base six of two. Now I wanna point out neither log base six of 81 nor log base six of two can really be simplified with our like with our method, right? Six and 81 don't have a common base. Six is a multiple of three, but it's not a power of three. 81 is a power of three, right? 81 is three to the fourth power. Three times three is nine, three times three is nine, nine times nine is 81. But these don't have a base in common. Neither do these, right? Six is a power of six. Two is a power of two. Six is a power of six. 81 is a power of three. But we can use our rules to kind of see what happens. So typically if I got something like this, I kind of want to smash it all together as one logarithm. Um, it might make sense to bring this power down, but I'm going to bring this power up. So sometimes it makes sense to bring the coefficient out in front as a power. So I'm going to write this as log base six of 81 to the one half power. And this is log base six of two squared. 81 to the one half is the same as the square root of 81, which is nine. So it's log base six of nine plus two squared is four, so log base six of four. And then I can use the product rule for logarithms, which says if you have a logarithm plus another logarithm, the bases are the same. We're always assuming the bases are the same. I'm going to stop saying it. So if you have a logarithm plus another logarithm, you can put it together as one logarithm where you multiply the, in, the arguments together. So this is log base six of nine times four. So that's equal to log base six of 36. And six to what power is equal to 36? Exactly. A lot of the times, so one of the things you'll notice about a lot of these problems is the numbers aren't going to be super large so that we can actually, with relatively minimal effort, actually figure out what the power is. Or like, I'm not going to ask you what log base six of 1,296 is, even though the answer is four. Because it's just, it's too big a number to really reasonably deal with. At least not without a calculator. Um, so let's look at some other things we like to do with logarithms, like solving equations. I was gonna, I was gonna try and try and do the erasing while leaving this side up. All right, that's a good that's a good thing to do to leave this up as long as possible. I'll call erasing over here. I think so. I'm sure you can do it. Oops. If not, just bend the board though. One of the one of these sides of this board has like a it's not screwed like a missing screw here. That's still never be tight. We're not yeah. We're good. 
and this thing is not the most stable of things. So let's look at this equation. So we want to solve for x. Um, and before we get going here, I'm going to remind you of something. So we have log base 5 of x minus 3 plus, no, yeah, plus log base 5 of x plus 1 equal to 1. And what I want to remind you of, excuse me, first of all, the bases will always be the same. I'm never going to ask you a question like this where the bases are different. But two, this equation has some restrictions to it. It would not be okay if like I got x equal to two as an answer. Because if x was equal to two, I would have log base five of two minus three, which is log base five of negative one. And you can't get the logarithm of a negative number. So for equations like this, where you have logarithms, we have to check our answers to make sure they're actually in the domain of the original expression. So here, before I get going, I know that x minus 3 has to be greater than 0. So that x has to be greater than 3. And I also need that x plus 1 has to be greater than 0. So that x has to be greater than negative 1. So the one that's bigger is the one I have to actually look at. So whatever I get, I know that my answers have to be bigger than 3. I don't usually do this to begin with, but it's not, it's not bad to do. So then we're going to put these together. We're going to write this as log base 5 of x plus, sorry, x minus 3 times x plus 1 equal to 1. And I would probably multiply this out first. So I'm write this as log base 5 of x minus 3 times x plus 1 is x squared plus x minus 3x is minus 2x minus 3. And now here's the important part. This is the part where a lot of mistakes usually happen. I have to rewrite this as an exponential equation. So everybody, what's my base? Five. Somebody else, what's the power on my base? Is it all of this or is it that? Right. So five to the first equals x squared minus two x minus three. What I usually see, the mistake that's most common that I see happen here is people will just say that the inside stuff here is equal to one. It's not, the inside stuff here is five because five to the first power equals five. So this stuff inside has to equal five to the first. So be careful, make sure that when you're doing an equation like this, you definitely rewrite it as your base to whatever it's equal to, to this power equals the inside argument. And now we're going to solve this. It's a quadratic. We're probably going to be able to factor. So I'm going to subtract 5. I'm going to get 0 equal to x squared minus 2x and minus 3 minus 5 is negative 3. And this factors as x, uh, x minus 4 times x plus 2. And I happen to just guess the right wrong answer. Uh, meaning, so the solutions we get here are x minus 4 equal to 0, which means x equals 4, and x plus 2 equal to 0, which means x equals negative 2. x equals 4 is totally valid because x equals 4 is bigger than 3. x equals negative 2 is not valid. It's not in the domain of the original expression. So x equals negative 2 is an extraneous solution we don't want it. Why did we get this extraneous solution? Well, here's the problem. When you plug in negative two here, it doesn't work, right? You get log base two of negative, or sorry, log base five of negative five plus log base five of negative one. But you can't get the logarithm of a negative number, which we talked about last class. The issue is that when you combine these together, the negative two would actually be totally fine here because negative two minus three is negative five times negative two plus one is negative one and negative five times negative one is positive five. And log base five of positive five is equal to one. So if this had been the original equation, negative two would be a totally fine answer. But we always have to look back at the very first thing we started off with and say, oh, look, yeah, negative two is no, oh, I said positive two, not negative two before. Yeah, sorry. 
Negative two, no good here, no good here. So that's what you want to be aware of. If you look back at your original expression, if either one of the insides of the logarithms happens to be negative, then the number that's doing that shouldn't be one of your answers. And the other thing I'll say is sometimes when you get multiple answers, both of them are good. Sometimes none of them are good. Sometimes, most of the time, just one of them is good. But you do need to check both your answers or all of your answers if there's more than two. Need to, uh, need to look at these other blue pens I've got to see if any of them are worth keeping. So apologies if this pen is trash. Let's look at this next. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, so the inequalities above are a range where our answer should. Yeah, um, I would actually, so I'd actually say, the only thing I would say about that is I would actually say they're a domain instead of a range. But yeah, they're, they're the, so, so really I don't usually do this. Usually what I do is I get my answers and say, okay, is four okay? Four minus three is positive one, check. Four plus one is positive five, check. Both of the arguments are positive, so I'm good. But for negative two, negative two minus three is negative five. Oh, I can't take a log of a negative, I'm done. So I don't usually write this stuff out, although this isn't wrong to do. I usually just get my answers and then look and see if they actually work or if they don't. Let's look at another one. Let's look at, what do I got here? Um, two times log base three of X. Uh, this kind of okay, but it's probably trash. Um, plus, sorry, minus log base three of x to the plus six equal to one. It's kind of this amazing. You're amazing. So, same idea. Whenever you're trying to solve an equation that's involving logarithms, the the thing that we're trying to do kind of before anything else is to compress if you have more than one logarithm into one logarithm. Now, before we can do that here, we can't put these logarithms together if there's a coefficient in front of either of them. So I'm gonna bring this two up into the power here and rewrite this as log base three of x squared minus log base three of x plus six equal to one. Yeah, it's not good done. And then we can compress this. Now, since it's subtraction instead of addition, we're going to write this left-hand side as log base three of the first thing divided by the second thing. That's going to go right. And then we're going to rewrite this. We're going to write this as three, our base, to the first power equals x squared over x plus six. Okay. Now, I've got three equals x squared over x plus six. So I'm trying to solve this. The most sensible thing to do is to multiply both sides by the denominator. So I'm gonna rewrite this as three times x plus six equals x squared. Um, so distribute. I get 3x plus 18 equals x squared. And then I'm going to bring everything to the right side because that's the side where the highest power has a positive coefficient. You could say negative x squared plus 3x plus 18 equals 0, but I don't like factoring quadratic if I have a negative x squared. So I'm going to say 0 equals x squared minus 3x minus 18. So then we're going to factor this. Usually these problems are designed such a way so that if you have a quadratic, it is going to factor. This factors is x minus 6 times x plus 3, right? Because negative 6 and 3 multiply to negative 18 and add it to negative 3. So our potential answers are x equal to 6 and x equal to negative 3. Is six good? Let's see. Six, yeah, log of six, that's a positive number, that's fine. And six plus six is 12, also positive, so six is good. Is negative three good? 
negative three is okay here because negative three plus six is positive three. The negative three is not good here. Negative three is a negative number and log of a negative number doesn't work. Is that it? Is this one more? No, there's a couple. Oh, there, there's a still front one. Um, there's something I want to point out because it comes up sometimes. So people often, when they are solving equations like this, kind of get stuck thinking that it's always the negative numbers that don't work and the positive numbers that do work. So here's kind of a contrived example that doesn't have that. And so I'm actually, I'm still looking at the notes, but I'm going to change the example, the next example, just a little bit. Still going to be pretty much the same. So let's look at this example. Um, log base two of negative x plus log base two of negative x minus seven equal to three. So let's find the answers here. So again, we're going to combine these together. So we're going to write this as log base two of negative x times negative x minus seven equal to three. I'm going to simplify. So negative x times negative x minus seven, I'm going to distribute. Negative x times negative x is positive x squared. Negative x times negative seven is positive seven x. I'm going to rewrite. My base is two, my power is three. It's equal to x squared plus seven x. Let's go ahead and bring everything to the right-hand side so that zero on the left equals x squared plus seven x. And I subtracted eight from both sides. So I have a minus eight. This factors. x times x gives me x squared and a positive eight times a negative one gives me a negative eight and adds up to positive seven. So what are my potential solutions here? Well, from this factor, we get x equal to what? Negative. And from this factor, we get x equal to positive one. Okay, so here's what I want you to see. This is kind of, this is the important part of this example. If we plug in negative eight, negative negative eight is positive, so that's okay. And negative negative eight minus seven is eight minus seven, which is one, which is positive, so that's okay. So negative eight is actually perfectly legit. Positive one on the other hand is no good. Negative one is a negative number and the log of a negative number doesn't exist. It's not real, it's undefined. So this one is no bueno. So in this particular problem, the negative number is the right answer and the positive answer is extraneous. What I'm trying to say here in general is that it doesn't matter what this number is, it matters what happens here. So what's happening here is positive, we're good to go. What's happening here is positive, we're good to go. Yeah. Okay, let's look at a few more things. All right, I was like, why are we doing this on the So log base eight of 32 equal to x. Um, I don't feel like this is really using any of the rules. I suppose, okay, there, there is a way you could use these rules to solve this. Um, so personally, I would solve this the following way. I would write this as eight to the X equals 32. And then we can recognize that eight and 32 are both powers of two, or at least I should say, so it's true that eight and 32 are also both powers of four and both powers of eight, but they're not nice powers of four, right? Eight is not a nice power of four. 
4 squared is 16, 4 to the first is 4. What I really say is when I want to write things as powers of a common base, I want to write them as integer powers of a common base. So I want to write 8 as 2 to the third to the x. And I want to write 32 as 2 to the fifth. And then we can say 2 to the 3x equals 2 to the fifth. Since the bases are the same, the powers have to be the same. So 3x equals 5, x equals 5 divided by 3. I will point out that there are other, I mean, most of the time there are multiple ways of solving lots of things. We could definitely, a different way to try and solve this would be to say, well, log base eight of 32, we could write 32 as two to the fifth. Okay, this is log base eight of two to the fifth. We could bring down that power. So this is five times log base eight of two. And then it's not unreasonable to know what log base eight of two is. So here's the question, eight to what power equals two? Well, I know that two to the third equals eight. I know that eight to the one third power equals two, also known as the cube root of eight. I'm not saying you have to do this or should do this, but I'm just saying this is an option if you wanted it to be. So we can say, hey, look, I know that this is one third because eight to the one third power equals two. So that this is equal to five times one third, which is five thirds. That's probably a, a less intuitive way to do the problem, but still a valid way to do the problem. Okay. Sorry, sir. So sometimes problems are going to have bases that are just different, and we're not going to get a nice solution. Some examples of this. I want to solve 10 to the x equals 2. Well, 10 and 2 don't have a common base. At this point, you can kind of use any base you want. It would probably make the most sense to either use base 10 or maybe even base 2, but usually, usually the thing that's 2 to the power is the thing you want to use the base. So I would totally write this as log base 10 of 2 is equal to x. Right? That's the same because 10 to the x equals 2. And that's our solution, right? We're kind of done. So I would say that my solution here is x equal to log of 2. And I'm not writing the base because I know that when I don't write base, it means it's base 10. That's it. That's my answer. That's all we can do. I should say this is our exact answer. So this is this is an exact answer. If you use a calculator, which I'm not requiring or asking you to do, but if you want to find a decimal approximation, you can, although if you're, so if you're asked to solve this, this is the answer you should give. If you want, you can go one step further and then also say that this is approximately equal to, I find the log of two, it's about 0.30. But I only, I definitely always want the exact answer unless I specifically ask for a decimal approximation. So just be aware of that. Um, how much time have I got? Sure. Let's look at this next one. I want to solve e to the x equal to 10 to the x plus 1. And here you can really use either base you could right since i so here it's kind of a little more complicated since both sides have an x typically if i can use any logarithmic base that i want i prefer log base e because it's one less letter to write 
So I'm going to write the natural log of e to the x equals the natural log of 10 to the x plus one. I want to remind you this natural log, this ln just means log base e, where again, e is the number that's approximately 2.7. So I'm going to bring, so the, the whole, and this is kind of something you'll see in this class and in future classes, when you're trying to deal with things that have variables in your exponent, a typical plan of attack is to take the natural log of the sides, which allows you to get the variable out of the exponent. So one of the whole reasons for taking the natural log of the sides here is that then this exponent and this exponent get to come down the front. So I've got x times the natural log of e equal to x plus 1 times the natural log of 10. All right, well, natural log of e. I'll remind everybody that this is just log base e of e. What's the log base e of e? e to what power equals e? Would it be one. one? Yeah. And that's equal to, I'm going to distribute here, I'm going to distribute this natural log of 10 to the x and the one. So then x times natural log of 10 plus one times natural log of 10. Um, but I should point out, just so everyone's cool with this, right? If your base and your inside argument match up, you always get one. So log base five, of five equals one. Log base seven of seven equals one. And in general, log base b of b equals one because b to the first power equals b. So now to solve for x here, I need to group my x things on the same side. x times one is just x of x minus x times natural log of 10 equals natural log of 10. I'm going to factor out an x. I'm left with a 1 here and a natural log of 10 here equals natural log of 10. And then I'm going to divide by 1 minus natural log of 10. And of course, I've run out of room. There are my answer over here. So that x times 1 minus natural log of 10 equal to the natural log of 10. Dividing both sides by this gives me that x is equal to the natural log of 10 over 1 minus the natural log of 10. Which, if you wanted to, you could find a decimal approximation is approximately negative 1.77. I should also mention, we don't have to do any checking of our answer being in the right place here because our equation started off as e to the x equal 10 to the x plus one. And there's no restrictions for what x is allowed to be. You can take e to a positive power or e to a negative power and still get a real number. over here. Okay. I feel like there's something I'm forgetting about. Let me do, let me check one thing real quick to make sure I'm not forgetting something stupid here. Um, let me look at the homework real quick. Want to make sure because sometimes there's some types of questions. No, nope, none of those there. Okay, cool. No, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there's no there's no issues that I was thinking that we had. Great. So we got a couple more equations to solve. Mm, just a couple more. So the first thing first, let's simplify this thing. And you know, let's solve it and simplify. So let's solve 
five to the two X minus three equal to four. So these equations aren't too terrible to solve if you only have a power of X on one side. Um, you could use log base five. You could use, it's, but it's, I will say, it's typically fairly standard to use the natural log or the log base 10. One of the reasons being is that those two particular bases are always on your calculator. So right, my calculator here, if you guys can see it, you can look over to the right, uh, right by my finger here. There's the natural log and the log button. So those two bases are always available on the scientific calculator, whereas log base five, log base three, log base anything else isn't usually. So typically we default to using the natural log or the log base 10. But I'll do it two ways to show you. So here's the usual way to do this. You would do the natural log of five to the two X minus three equals the natural log of four. Then I'm gonna bring down this power. So I have two X minus three all times natural log of five equal to the natural log of four. And I will say, if, you're ne if your logarithm is just a logarithm of one number, we often don't write it in parentheses. I'm going to distribute so that 2x times natural log of 5 minus 3 times natural log of 5 is equal to the natural log of 4. I'm trying to solve for x, so I'm going to isolate this. I'm going to add this to both sides. These cancel out. So I get 2x natural log of 5 equal to natural log of 4 plus 3 natural log of 5. And then divide both sides by the 2 and the natural log of 5. So it's like the 2 and the 2 and the natural log of 5 cancel. So we end up with x equal to all of this natural log of four plus three natural log of five over two natural log of five. And while you could simplify this more, you shouldn't. What I mean by more is you could write the bottom part if you wanted to, right? The two could come up as the power there and you could write that as the natural log of five squared. And same thing here, the three could come up as the power and you could write this as the natural log of four plus the natural log of five cubed. And then you can combine those together and write this as the natural log of four times 125. So I'm saying you shouldn't do this, right? Even though it looks a little nicer to write this as the natural log of 600 over the natural log of 25, those are totally unnecessary steps. Don't do this, don't do this. Once you get to here, just leave it like that. Um, the other way we could have gone about doing this problem would have been to say, well, I've got five as my base, so I could write this as log base five of four equals two x minus three. I will admit there is less algebra to do if we do it this way. So solving for x, if I add three to both sides, I get three plus log base five of four equals two x, and then divide both sides by two, x equals three plus log base five of four divided by two. It's not wrong to do it this way. These answers are the same, even though they look a little bit different, but I would encourage everybody to do it this way where you actually use the natural log because it's just, it's what you'll see in future classes. Um, it's a very standard way of solving exponential equations like this. So I really, 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 I'll accept this but doing it this way is not gonna be as helpful for yourself. So while this is okay, I would really, really strongly recommend that everybody try and do problems like this this way, because it's what you're gonna see in future classes. Um, yeah, sure. I really, I wanna see one other thing here. Oh, there are a couple, uh, okay, cool. Let's do, yeah, let's do, I think I did one of the homework problems, that's okay. Um, let's do one more, oh, sorry, I, you know, I, 
flipped before I raised. Oh well. Also, one reason it is you can use natural log is if you're trying to solve something like this, like three to the x plus two equal to uh, five to the two x minus seven, then you can't really just use log base there, log base five. It's going to be gross. Here, you definitely want to use the natural log. It's also perfectly fine to use the log log base ten. I just, mathematicians are lazy and we would rather write two letters instead of writing three letters. That is one of the reasons we often use natural log instead. So then the powers come down. So you get x plus two times the natural log of two, sorry, the natural log of three, equal to two x minus seven times the natural log of five. We distribute. So I get x times natural log of 3 plus 2 times natural log of 3 equals 2x times natural log of 5 minus 7 times natural log of 5. We're going to bring all of our x's to one side and all of our not x's to the other side. So let's bring all of our x's to the left. So x natural log of 3 minus 2x natural log of 5 equals negative 7 natural log of 5 minus two natural log of three. Factor out the x. So I get x times natural log of three minus two natural log of five. Leave this side as is. And then finally divide both sides by natural log of three minus two natural log of five. So that we get x equals all of this negative seven natural log of five minus two and natural log of three divided by all of that natural log of three minus two natural log of five and we can't cancel anything here right even though you have a natural log of five on the top of natural log of five on the bottom they don't cancel out to be able to cancel a thing i have to be able to factor it out from the top and the bottom <clears throat> all right and then the last thing I think I just threw this last thing on here at the end to, oh, I see the problem. So this problem, there was a problem in red in my notes that I was gonna do, but this problem is better. And they're pretty much the same. But, uh, the last thing I wanna do is just how to simplify something like this. Log base seven of seven squared times the fifth root of seven. Um, so you could, if you wanted to, multiply seven squared times seven to the one fifth and add the powers. That's not what we should do. Instead, we should break this up as log base seven of seven squared plus log base seven of, instead of the fifth root of seven, it's gonna be more beneficial to write that as seven to the one fifth power. All right. So this next question is meant to be super duper easy. What is log base seven of seven squared? What do you guys think? Is that a five before the root sign? That's a good question. That is a five. Yeah, sorry if it's a little unclear. This is log base seven of seven squared times the fifth root of seven. And it became log base seven of seven squared plus log base seven of seven to the one fifth. I wrote it as seven to the one fifth instead of the fifth root of seven. So log base seven of seven squared. Well, again, what does this mean? It means seven to what power equals seven squared? So seven to what power equals seven squared? Uh, to the second power. Right. You could also bring down the power if you prefer. Right? You could totally bring this down in front and say two times log base seven of seven is two times one, because log base seven of seven is one. I have another that, question. Yeah. Is that a one third? Wow. A one fifth. 
Sorry, Sorry if it's hard to read. It's okay. Thanks. So that's a five. My fives never look good. And that's a one fifth. For the same reason, log base seven of seven to the one fifth is one fifth because you're asking seven to what power equals this stuff in here? Well, seven to the one fifth power equals seven to the one fifth power. And then we should add these together. So here's the thing, we definitely wanna write this either as 2.2, right? one fifth is equal to 0.2, or as a mixed fraction, two is 10 fifths and 10 fifths plus one fifth is 11 fifths. But we don't want to write this as two and one fifth. That's just not something we do. We don't use, um, I'm sorry, I call this a mixed fraction. That's an improper fraction. That's the mixed fraction. We don't use mixed fractions. We use a proper fraction. I know I've said it before. It seemed like a good time to say it again. All right, we're definitely out of time. To let